Okay everyone, the article below looks at why you probably shouldn't invest in Japanese real estate. Now I'm going to summarize uh, the article in this video. Now basically, with Japanese real estate, you've got numerous issues. Now number one, just like all around the world, property now can be quite bureaucratic and indeed costly, right? All around the world you have an issue of maintenance costs, taxes and whatever. Obviously though to different extents, in some emerging markets it's much cheaper. But in Japan, these kind of things are much more of an issue because you've got things like uh, insurance for natural disasters. And even though most Japanese earthquakes aren't as bad as, say, the one in 2011, it does happen regularly where people have to do maintenance after an earthquake, which isn't seen as severe. So most Japanese families, they understand that basically they own the land and they're going to have to like rebuild the land. I know it sounds silly from a British perspective or maybe say a Hong Kong perspective or whatever, but culturally speaking, many Japanese people understand, look, we own the land, but we might have to rebuild two or three times because of natural disasters or for whatever reason. So Japanese houses are not built to last and you've got the natural disasters and so on. I just like you have an aging population. And this really shows in terms of if you're a self-employed person in Japan, you can actually use your house as a depreciating asset on your accountancy. In other words, it can be quite tax efficient in Japan in some regards, not in all regards, but that shows the issue with Japanese housing. You can only win when it comes to rental yields. You can't realistically hope that the property values are gonna go up. Uh, it's actually well understood now in Japan that actually property values are gonna be stagnant or indeed are gonna fall, which is shown in their accountancy system. You can actually claim your house as a depreciating asset. So most of the people in Japan who buy a house, including foreigners, what they're hoping to do is buy in a decent area, maybe buy until the Olympics or whatever, but that's obviously in question now, at least for this year. I hope the property values just about keep uh, up with inflation at best, but probably go down slightly, but they can make decent money from the rents. However, what happened is the Japanese government regulated Airbnb a lot. So I'm not saying it's impossible Airbnb now in Japan, but high rental yields are much higher than three or four years ago. So at the end of the day, if you've got a property in Japan which is giving you 0% at best in terms of the capital value, five, six, seven, eight percent in terms of rental yields, but you've got loads of costs, so you're getting like three or four percent per year, for example, it's not really worth the hassle, especially in a country like Japan. It's not like uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, where you can deal in English. In Japan, a lot of the bureaucracy is in Japanese, and even though the local government will be quite friendly to you, uh, as a foreigner and try to make your life uh, reasonably uh, easy and indeed I've spoken to the local government before in Japan they do try to you know send you someone who can speak English and, and so on it's not an easy country to do business if you're a foreigner so most of the people in fact I would say 90 to 95 percent of the people I know who are bought in Japan regret it unless they've got a Japanese husband or wife who can do all the work for them but the people who are buying from overseas they either usually lose money, break even, or make some money, but basically it's not worth the hassle and the cost involved.